Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, Lord, you know I love you, man. You know all things, Lord, you know I love you, man. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. And Peter turned and saw that the disciples whom Jesus loved was following them. And this was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? That was John. And when Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? And Jesus answered, if I want him to remain until, alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. You must follow me. You may be seated. What are you going to do? What will you, you, you do? The subtitle is, Come Alive to the Calling. Come alive to the coming. Escucha el llamado de Dios. Come alive to the calling. Doesn't matter how you look at this day. Is it Easter or Resurrection Sunday? Whatever you call it. Is it the pagan Easter or the Christian Easter? The pagan Easter is the one that they celebrate. They celebrate the spring coming of life as an example of the spring coming of life. They, they'll, they'll have an egg. Big old ostrich egg. And inside the egg, they'll have candy, chocolate candy. Amen. They have all kind of. She can't catch when the Hondurans can't catch. Hallelujah. Uh, they'll celebrate it by by bunny rabbits. I don't have a bunny rabbit, so I got a little poodle. Little. It is what it is. Okay. They have little baskets and and they'll play games. Horseshoes. They'll be at the mall shopping for new clothes. Sister Sharon got a new dress on. We noticed it. Her no bougie self. None worse than bougie black people. That's the worst thing there is. And we know she got it. At the, we know. We know what she got. Celebrate it. Eating. It's always about eating. Church people know how to eat. Come on. Black people and white people agree to this one thing. Amen. We have ham for Resurrection Easter Sunday. They all got ham. Come on. Come on. Tom's, he's white. He's got three hams. We're going to Tom's house. <laughs> They're all over the place celebrating Easter, Resurrection Sunday, Easter. The bunny that gave birth to chocolate eggs. 
one of the animals that produces abundantly. The painting of egg that really has its roots in witchcraft. The painting of eggs and hiding eggs got the roots in witchcraft. That young lady needs an interpreter. So if you can handle that without being distracted. Um, are you with me? Juan's back there. He can interpret to that young lady. She made it all the way here. We got to help. Okay. Um, it's honoring those that honor the house. He wasn't. The pagan Easter, the Christian Easter. The celebration of the goddess Esther and her reproducing or bringing forth life. Or maybe the coming forth of eternal life. From the sacrifice of the Messiah, Jesus, Jesus Christos. Redeeming men from their sins. Because we had a life problem. We existed, but we didn't have a life. As it says in the Bible... That without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Hebrews 9.22 And if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died and his blood was shed to redeem you and save you from your sins, and if you place your faith in what he did and confess your sins and turn from your sins because you got to repent, and turn for you and accept him as your Lord and Savior and your payment for your sins. And believe that he died and, and was raised again and pattern your life that way. Then, then, then you'll be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 through 11. You dedicate your life because of that saving grace to walk with him and talk with him. A long life, never away. And serve the kingdom of God. Whatever may be the way you look at the resurrection Easter Sunday. It requires a decision. Here we have the seeds, the, 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 the radical story, right? Of Jesus confronting to reinstate. The backslider Peter. About his, his, his decision on this matter. He poses a question to Peter. And via the scriptures. He poses that question to each and every one of us. What will you do? What will you do? What will you do? Easter resurrection Sunday requires a decision. What will you do? What will you do? It requires a decision. It stands from this text and conversation of Jesus with Peter in reference to a decision that Peter has to make. It's very important that and, and, and very serious. You, you got to get serious with things of God. You got to stop playing. And taking things so carelessly. And making light of important matters. Is important. In the neighborhood. They tell, they, they, they tell it like this. They tell you stop playing. Stop playing. Tell somebody this morning. Stop playing. Stop playing. Man. Stop playing. Stop playing. Man. Stop playing. Stop playing. Man. Stop playing. You act like a, a fool. You act like a child. Stop playing. Stop playing so much. Stop playing so much. Playing with God. Uh, stop playing. It's very important to realize that we need to make the right decisions. When it came to the question that, that Easter Resurrection Sunday poses, there's a question here. 
There's a question with the story that we that Jesus came to this world and, and lived and taught and, and mentored and, and was persecuted and then was tortured and killed and put in a grave, resurrected. <laughs> There's, there, there's a question after this. There's a question after this. It brings forth a question. He brings forth a question to Peter, and, and not just Peter, the, everybody that calls on the name of the Lord. There's a question. He poses the question. A decision has to be made of, about Easter and resurrection and not just the name or, or, or the functions and, and the, the, the ceremonies that people have. There's a, there's a question behind this. After you eat the eggs and, 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 and smoke the chocolate, I don't know what you do. After you do all that right there, there's a question. 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 Read with me in verse 15 and following. I got to go quick because I, I got a ham in the oven. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got some sweet potato. I got some yams. I got some pigeon peas and rice. I got some salad. I got some cornbread. I got some grape Kool-Aid. Sweet tea. Pateles. I got some Puerto Rican pateles. No macaroni and cheese. No macaroni and cheese. Black people let me down this year. They they gone they gone they gone biting on me. They gone biting on me. That's all right. That's all right. Jesus gonna get them. Read with me, read with me, verse 15, quickly, quickly. And when they they had finished eating. Jesus said to Simon Peter, do you truly love me more than these? Because he bragged about that back in there. I'll do everything for Jesus. I love Jesus. I got Jesus. He saved me. He delivered me. He healed me. He restored me. He helped me. He employed me. He did this. He that. I'll do whatever for Jesus to hear you tell it. To hear you tell it. Peter ha ha had gone back to fishing. He was taking care of his business, his paycheck, his, his profession, his studies, his swole, his working out, his kids and spoiled brat, uh, brat I'm just going to be grandkids. Taking care of, oh, 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 oh. Little Muffy has a graduation. Another graduation, boy. Fifteen graduations now. I got people from Puerto Rico visiting. He gone back to that. And Jesus asked him concerning his love. Why? Because what you do, what you employ yourself, is the thing you love. You show me your bank account, I'll tell you what you love. You show me where you put your money. I tell you what you love. It, it ain't deep. I can tell you exactly who you love. I can tell you exactly what you love. It's about what you employing yourself in. If you come home to ch church to sleep, you know. <laughs> who, who? Hello? You love whatever you spend your energies on. Jesus goes to Peter and he says, let's, let's deal with the matter. He says, Peter, do you really love me? Yeah. Because there's a, a duty. There's a duty. He says, yeah, you know I love you. He says, yeah, you really love me? Then feed my lambs. 
take care of my business. I, I want you employed on my things. I know you're busy with your things and your fishing. But let me show you something. How many fish did you catch? The Bible says 153. With my help. Without my help, none. Someone told me on Friday, oh, so-and-so is home studying. I said, he's going out there without God's help. Because he should have been here. And if God would have helped him with his studying, can I tell the young people, you put God first, he'll help you with the study. You put your study first, you're at it on your own. You're on it your own. No, but, 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 no, no, get your butt out of my face. I, I tell you. Here, they try to fish without God's help. They got zero. Jesus said, go ahead. They got the fish are so big. They, they, couldn't even, they couldn't even bring it over here. They brought it in because the Holy Ghost was there helping them. Because if not, the net would break. Holy Ghost was helping. And each one, each fish, each fish had a number. It was important to him that, that, that there was a, a, a providential care for each fish. And here he says, take care of my lamb. Take care of my people. They say lamb because it's talking about baby Christians. You know, baby Christians need care. We do all kind of things to get them saved. We do all kind of things to bring them to church. We do all kind of things. And when they accept the Lord, we abandon them. And babies need care. Babies need a lot of care. They need a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting, a lot of Bibles, a lot of church, a lot of protection, a lot of counseling, a lot of teaching. They need care. And Jesus said, I need for you, 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 you to take care of my little lambs. You take care of them. And you, you got a duty to the weak. We have a duty to the weak. We have a duty to the weak. Nothing better than you being saved. Amen. But the best thing, you got to go out there and save people. There was an Italian captain of a boat and, and the boat was going down. And the duty of the captain is making sure everybody is safe before he is safe. When they were looking for the captain, they found him on the other ship already saved while the ship was going down. He abandoned them. They put him in jail. What, 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 what can we say about church folks? Oh, somebody say, well, uh, well, you are you all right? You saved, you doing good, you got money, you eating good. Amen. You got the Holy Ghost, you prophesying and proper lying. Now you don't care about nobody else. I'm doing me. I'm doing mine. I'm doing us. I'm doing we. Here, Jesus puts it to him. In this resurrection Sunday, we need a decision. After he had showed up so many, he showed up to Mary Magdalene. He showed up to the women. He showed up to two believers that were traveling on the road. He showed up to, to his disciples. He showed up to Thomas. He showed up to the seven disciples. He showed up to 500 witnesses. <coughs> 500 witnesses. See, because we do not, we do not have a resurrection Sunday without common sense also. In order to prove a fact is true, there must be a witness. He showed up to 500 odd number of people. <clears throat> it is recorded on books. And according to the law, if there are witnesses, then the fact is true. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ is true. His declaration of God had to be God is true. The, 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 the testimony, Brother Keith, remember when they locked you down? The testimony. The testimony shows, the evidence shows 
the miracles declare show that he is God. And God is asking Peter and asking us, do we love him? Because I tell you, I know what you love. An exterior evidence of an interior quality. I know what you like because of the way you dress. I know what kind of wardrobe you got. Some people love plaid. It's a white version of Gucci. Trailer park Gucci. They love them some plaid. Everything's plaid. Other people wear black. Black and more black. It's thinning. It's thinning. No, we still know you fat. Ain't that much thin in the world. I'm sorry. Don't get upset. And say, I'm going on a diet. Hallelujah. Jesus said, do you love me? The service is tested. You're being tested. When Jesus tells you, I want you, and you say no. When you don't show up, you can avoid pastor's phone call all the while. I know you got an attitude. You don't want to serve. Because if you want to serve, you'll move every mountain, heaven, and earth. You'll tell the white man, you can fire me if you want to. Sorry, Tom. You can fire me if you want to. I'm going to go serve the Lord. Huh? Got this lady in a wheelchair out there. Serving the Lord. You'll move heaven and earth to serve the Lord. You think by not answering the phone call, you don't think you already gave me an answer? You gave me an answer. You gave me an answer. I said, that's all right. I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get my blessing and yours. Ain't nobody crazy. You know, nobody. We've only done the, the, this play how many times? You know, you know, you know, you could have scheduled, you could have moved this, you could have, you just didn't want to. What will you do? 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 Resurrection Sunday demands an answer to us. Demands an answer. I had a friend, a millionaire, he became a millionaire overnight. Became a millionaire now and won't give God any money. He went from broke to being a millionaire. And I asked him, but why do you want to be like that? He says, no, because I just don't believe God will take care of me. He went from zero. That's why Margie didn't marry him. <laughs> Mary broke Tom. Broke as no joke, Tom. God bless him. The service is tested. It's an adaptation of truth. You've got to adapt the truth for yourself. What do you believe? What, what are you living? How are you going to live after, after the, the cross, after the empty tomb, after the resurrected Savior talks to you and says, what are you going to do? Peter turned around and said, but what about him? Jesus said this, I'm speaking to you. There was 153 fish. Somebody counted them. Because every individual person matters to God. We are individuals created with a glorious calling from God to serve. We got a glorious calling from God. I went before everything. I got dressed up and I went down to the Walmart. Dressed as Jesus. Carrying my cross in Walmart. That's where Jesus shops. Walmart. I don't know enough shop. The, the manager looked at me and said, oh, how nice. But you can't give away those flyers. I said, that's okay. But here's one for you. I got thrown out of Walmart. In the name of Jesus. And then I went across the street. I went to get a megaphone at, at Brand Smart or whatever that Best Buys. I think one of those stars. And I got in there, this and that. And people are looking at me. Who, who's that? 
People are going, yeah, all right. Other people are going, woo, woo. There was a kid looking at me like he had a demon. He was like, and I'm standing by him and I'm, I'm speaking to him. Those demons start popping off him because they snap. They pop, 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 pop. They were snapping off. No, they don't. But you know what I mean. They were coming off him. And then a lady walks up to me. Older lady, maybe anywhere from 55 to 65 years with the lesbian homosexual spirit on her. A homosexual old lady ain't no worse than an old homosexual. Because when you're young, everybody wants you. But when you're an old homosexual, nobody wants you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach it like I feel it. I'm sorry. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. When you're young and divorced and, and got kids, everybody wants you. But tell me when you're older. Nobody wants you and your sorry kids. That lady, you know what she did? You know what she had the nerve to do? She came up to me and said, I want one of those. I want one of those. Give me that preacher. And it said, we're praying for you. See, you don't know who needs God. See, the religious people, the good people didn't come to Jesus. The whores, the, the, the criminals, the drug addicts came to Jesus before the righteous people did. They came to Jesus. Well, righteous religious people said, now I'm running this. Mm. See, I, I left that place crying. I said, Lord, even if you brought me out here for her. Just for her. Just for her. I'll serve you, Lord. Just for her. Nobody else came to me. Manager threw me out. The shorties thought they were Mr. Swag. She came to me. Give me one of those, man. I need that. Again, Jesus says, Simon, son of Jonah, do you truly love me? Love produced by services. Love produced by services. Faith with works. Faith without works is dead. Some people can talk game, but they don't have any game. I keep it 100. I keep it 100. Everywhere I go is Jesus. Because I was lost. I was undone. I was beside myself. And he took me in. And he loved me. And he forgave me. And he healed me. And he cleansed me. And he brought me out. <laughs> Jesus told me, do you really love me? Do you have love for Christ? Do you really have love for Christ? Jesus answered, Do you truly love me? Because service is commanded. Can I tell you, service is commanded. You got too many church people, you got to beg them to do something for God. Where would you be without Jesus? Where would you be without, really? Uh, I would have lost my mind. I would have killed everybody and then killed myself too. I don't, I don't know if you ever got that way. Uh, if they would have put me in jail, I would have killed everybody and then stuck my head right through the bars. I'm going to be graphic, so I'll get out. I would have stuck my head through those bars, man. Please don't get it twisted because preacher man looked like he's soft. I won't try him. I won't try him. Uh, it's some real stuff up in here. You got to get serious. You got to stop playing. You got to stop playing. God commands us. Take care of the weak. Take care of the new believers. Take care of the lost. Take care. In this Resurrection Sunday, rise up and take care of humanity. I love Jesus. You really love Jesus? Take care of the sheep. If you really love Jesus, Jesus said, take care 
of my sheep. Different between a lamb and a sheep is how old they are. Lamb's a baby. Sheep is older Christians. Older men and women. Take care of my older saints. Take care of my older people. Take care of my seniors. Take care of, uh, of the sickly. Take care of people got drug problems. There are people that got that got money problems, got car problems, got all kinds of problems. Take care of them. I told my boys, you we, we fight against each other, this and that and whatnot, and we want to kick people out of our lives. Tell me one of the disciples that Jesus kicked out of his life. And we're talking about perfect humanity and divinity in one. He was perfect. He could have had a reason to kick him all out. Well, thief, you're a player. You're a hater. You put a pride. You want position. Because I tell you, when I see people want position and don't want to serve, I want to throw them out. Because we come here, we sit on Wednesdays. Those that didn't make it on Wednesday, we sit on Wednesday. Find yourself a place to serve, not a place to shine. We want a place to shine. Give them a microphone. They will backslide in a minute. They will backslide in a minute. They'll become a movie star. Love is the test. Love is the test. Love is the test of the minister's meeting, the minister's duty. Take care of my sheep. Take care of my sheep. Take care of my sheep. God's flock. God's flock. Are you taking care of God's flock? Are you taking care of God's flock? If you're so overwhelmed, you can't take a, a, a God's flock. It's time to change what you're doing. Peter was fishing. Peter was fishing. He went back to his company. And Jesus told him, I want you to leave the fishing and take care of my flock. He tells us, leave what you're doing and take care of my flock. Nothing worse than you getting yours and not knowing how to share. Huh? Nothing worse than you doing good and everybody behind you, around you going to hell and you don't care. I'm taking care of mine. I gave Roly some pills. He's got his eyes cold. I don't know if he's out. Hallelujah. I can't see you too good with these glasses, bro. They're fogging up. Verse 17 says, the third time he said to him, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was hurt. Peter's hurt. Imagine if Jesus would ask you three times, do you really love me? Do you really love me? Do you really care? He's testing him again. The service test. And Peter told him, well, you know I do. You're omniscient. You know it all. You know it all, Lord. And Jesus tell him, feed my flock. Take care of all of them. Take care of all of them. Take care of all of them. If you're, leaving, if you're just living for yourself, you're still in the world. You're still in the world. You're still worldly. You can quote scripture all you want. I got a parrot at home. It can quote scriptures. I got a parrot. Come on. And he'll put the text in there, Margie. I don't got no parrot. I'm just messing with you. Sometimes it sounds like a parrot, but it's, it's my wife. Amen. Look, they all go like that. They, they were like, well. Jesus said, feed my sheep. 
I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you. Where you don't want to go. You're going to go through some stuff. Jesus knows your future. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to go through some stuff. I've seen the strongest individuals. Other people tell them when to sleep, when to eat, when to go here, when to go there, what you're going to do, with, and they can't fight it. Jesus said, you're going to die for me. That's what he was telling them. You, I'm going to take you to the cross. Can anybody accept Jesus if I tell you he's going to take you to a cross? He's going to say, pick up your cross and follow me. That cross where, that he was speaking about, it's not life's struggles. It's talking about actual termination of life. He's speaking about the, the instrument that they use to crucify you. He said, if you're my disciple, I need to get this straight. If you're not willing to die for me, you can't call yourself my disciple. Who wants to accept me now? Who wants me now? Huh? How you like me now? The church says, Felicia. How you like me now? This is serious. This is a serious matter. This ain't the play with where I like the song. I don't like the song. The air condition is too cold. The music's too loud. That Rolly's a, he's so obnoxious. It, it ain't about Rolly. That's what I meant. It ain't about the air condition. It ain't, I said, do you love the Lord enough to put up with a white song? No worse, Tom, I was the only Puerto Rican in an all-white church. And it was so white. I mean, it was white. It smelled like Bengay and mothballs. I mean, it was white. And they played white music. I'm Puerto Rican. We had a band, congas, bongos. I mean, like, we would have church. Boy, we'd have, uh, and then we went over town to black people church with mother, mother, mother uh, what was that lady's name? Mother uh, Ruth. Mother Ruth. And they had black music. We got Puerto Rican. <laughs> we, uh, and then we go to a white church. Do you love me enough to put up with some white music? I mean, you should hear this stuff. And Jesus said to Peter, you're going to have to die for me. You're going to have to die for me. Huh? Are you willing to die for me? This is the test. This is the test of love. Huh? Are you willing to die for me? What did he do? Huh? What did he do? The cost of your discipleship, Peter. What did he do? But well, what about Margie? I didn't see Sister Marina wasn't there. Why was the Marina one there? Free, free. I saw him making subs over there at Publix. He was, what, are you, what are you doing over there? Huh? Uh, but Jerome, Jerome, where, where was Jerome? Hey, over there, huh? We quickly say, what about them? And God said, no, you, you, what will you do? What will you do? What do you, what, if I want to bless him that he's way over there, that's, that's my problem with him. That got nothing to do with you. What will you do? This Resurrection Sunday, Easter, are you going to worship the eggs or are you going to say, I don't got nothing to do with that? I could have worked for the Miami Re Rescue Mission a long time ago. Long time. They tried to hire me several times. If you want to work on I look around and say, I got Easter eggs in the house of God. I got bunny rabbits. And then I got the big bunny rabbits. The Miami Heat girls, cheerleaders. Ooh. What's that DJ name? The, uh, the Miami Heat DJ? Hello? Tyree? I, I, you see, I don't know nothing about them. I'm saying. 
I'm saved. I don't know what 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 that new Irish rose, that new Irish what was that? Huh? Pink pink grapefruit Irish rose. They don't know what that is. Hallelujah. I've been saved so long. Most of the movies I've never even seen. What will you do? What will you do in this day and age? What will you do? I give you my examples. You can go home. What will you do? When the fentanyl is out there. And they offer you a little fentanyl. A little weed. A little sticky icky. Huh? A blunt. A spliff man. Uh, what will you do? Are you are you smoking or are you vaping? Where, which which one you want to do? Or you got the whole, the smoke of the Holy Ghost on you? Where, what are you going to do? Uh, what smoke do you see? A hookah? You hookah, my brother? Or, 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 or you got the Shekinah glory when it comes in the house. You see it. You feel it. It touches you. What will you do? What will you do? Will you live for God? Will you live right for God? Will you live to serve God? Because some people say, but they get away with it in this church and they do it like this over there. I know, will you live right for God? Will you live for God? Will you leave it all and, and follow me, missionary, evangelist, prophet, pastor, servant of the living God? Will you leave it all? Will you leave your success, successful career that Jesus started off because he gave you 153 big fish? Have you seen the price of fish lately? I got to wait for, for Good Friday for the Jamaican family down the street to give me some fried fish. Man, I won't get none. With some bun and cheese. Anybody like bun and cheese? Jamaican bun and cheese? Oh, I got to wait a whole year. I got it hidden in the back of the refrigerator, Nancy. Way in the back, behind, behind the Brussels sprouts. Nobody like Gloria's visiting. She's like, what's in here? Would you live right? Will you live for the Lord? Would you change the television? Would you change the music? Would you change the company? What 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 would you change? What would you leave for me? See, uh, Resurrection Sunday demands a, a a calling to a new life. It's a new life. You can't walk with a new Lord and Savior and still keep the old. You got to get rid of those statues. How many got those statues? Huh? Got to get rid of those idols. Got to get rid of all that mess. Will you leave a message? See, some people, God can't even give a, a message to leave on their phone because they won't put a message. I don't believe in leaving messages. I don't leave messages. But why not? You call me and you'll catch me singing a message to professionals all over the world. When they call me, oh my God. They, they don't reach me, they leave me a message. Man, I really like that message, Pastor. That was powerful. I never had no, no preacher sing to me. That I, really, that I needed that message, Pastor. That really touched me. And, and then sometimes I say, don't pick it up. I'm getting other people in the office to hear that song. They call back to hear the message. They don't even want to talk to me. I want to talk to you. I want to hear the message. Leave a message. Leave a message. What is your answer to God when he tells you give somebody a message? Huh? When he tells you that, that somebody might need something and they're going to find it in you, give them the message. Preach the message. Tell the message. That message might keep them out of jail. That from becoming suicidal when you give them a track, when you knock on their door and they're there, going to end their lives. But because the message you gave them. Who's going, Pastor? Who's going with us to knock on doors and talk to people about Jesus? You. You are. You're the one. 
You're the one that brought hope. You're the one that brought love. You're the one that brought grace. You're the one that, that, that God's asking you, you, Peter, forget about John. I'm talking to you. Because Peter had a problem. Peter had a problem. Because he failed the Lord. God wants to deal with your failures. He said, you deny me three times, I'm going to give you three times to make it up. Huh? Will you do what he asks you to do? Will you give people hope? Uh, when they don't have any hope in, in therapy, when they don't have any hope in their meds, when they have, they have nothing, uh, anything to satisfy their emptiness, their loneliness, their anxiety, their frustration, their fear, their confusion, their sanity, their hate, their morality, the perversion, the confusion, the sorrow and hunger, the thirst. What would you do? Jesus says, say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Sometimes the message is that simple. Why don't you just tell them what you need is Jesus. What you got to have is Jesus. What you got to call on is Jesus. Wait on Jesus. Go to Jesus. Have people call on Jesus. Lady called Sister Teresa and said, you know, I had this car accident and the lady in the car, she got these problems, uh, emotional problems. Now she's trying to sue me and this and that. Pray, pray, pray. Bring Jesus on the scene. Pray, pray, pray. Pastor Terry prayed. Then she heard a couple days later, hey, the, the same day, the lady the lady left the same day of the prayer. The same day of the prayer. Answer the phone, church people. Won't even answer the phone. Won't even call back. You desperate need for a prayer, Sister Blanco. If you need prayer, don't call church people. <laughs> They got phones that they carry with them and won't answer the phone. What kind of messed up church people is this? They know pastor goes through hell. They won't even pick up the phone to help the pastor. They think I'm calling them to get some, some, some shrimp and grits. They think pastor trying to get some conch fritters. Pastor trying to get some conch fritters. That pastor always begging for food. Will you? Will you pick up the phone? Will you give him Jesus? Will you? Will you? Will you answer the call? Literally answer the call that, that Jesus had for Peter. You know, there's a lack of pilots. They're putting women in there. There's a lack of pastors. They're putting women in there. The Bible says, let he be a man. Let the women minister to women. <laughs> there's a lack of teachers. They're putting women in there. I had male teachers when I was growing up. Sad thing is, now there's la la a lack of of fathers and husbands. They're putting women in there. Did he say that? Oh my God. Answer the call, men. Answer the call, men. Answer the call, men. Get off your stupid, sorry phones watching television. Answer the call. Answer the call, men. Answer the call, fathers. Answer the call, fathers. <laughs> Answer the call. And Jesus told him, don't worry about anybody else. What will you do? <laughs> Peter. Peter said. I'll do what you ask. Peter said, I'll do what you ask. Peter said, you can count on me. I'll take care of what I got to take care of. 
My decision, uh, I know you wanted, I know you wanted eggs. And I know Sister Blanca wanted candy. And the kids, they want bunny rabbits. The only thing I got is a little poo. Some people want a little basket with little, with little flowers and, and whatnot. I got this leather donated. I only got a calling for you. I've got a calling for you. From Jesus himself. Will you feed my sheep? Will you take care of my lamb? Because you love me. Because you love me. Because you love them. Because you love the kingdom. But well, pastor, they don't deserve to be lo loved. I read somewhere, Terry told me somewhere. What was it? Um, love them even though they don't deserve it. Love them even though they don't deserve it. Come on, stand. Stand. Answer the call. What will you do? This is one of those sermons that we don't hide out on anyone. We know Peter did it. We know Peter went all the way. He loved the Lord so much and respected the Lord so much that when they were going to crucify him, he said, crucify me upside down. I don't deserve to be crucified the same way they crucified my Lord and Savior. Crucify me upside down. I'm no good. Crucify me upside down. He went all the way. All the way. Just like Jesus went all the way for us. What will you do? From this point on, will you, will you enjoy yourself and, and sharing and helping and serving God's kingdom heavenly father we know it starts by repenting of our sins peter was getting a chance to repent of his sin his sins even though he already belonged to jesus lord i know you always give a chance for the world to repent of their sins but the, I, I pray this for the church people to repent we gone fishing we gone fishing for us. Lord, I pray that these, your saints, yours, will answer the call. What will you do? Do you love me? Lord, that their answer would be unequivocally, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will do whatever you would have me to do. I will go wherever you would have me to go. I will be whatever you want me to be. I will live the way you would have me to live. I will run the way you would have me to run. I will die the way you would have me to die. Father, that this resurrection Sunday be a resurrection to our lives. A resurrection to that love that we had when we first discovered you. When we first knew you, like the song says. Lord, resurrect us. Resurrect us. Resurrect our obedience. Resurrect our dedication. Resurrect us. Enough, Lord, of playing. Enough. Change whatever you got to change. You change Peter's job. Lord, I pray that you change people's jobs here. That you change the way they study. The way they work out. Some people don't come to church because they're working out at the gym right now. They're not serving. Lord, that you change their, their whole relationships. That you change their neighborhood. God, give us a resurrection that wherever you lead, we will follow. That's the abundant life, Lord, that they need to know and have and be. That they will turn from their way and go your way. Those that don't know you, Lord, come into their lives as they repent and call on you. Let them know, no, 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 that you have come into their lives, that you have forgiven their sin, that you have cleansed them, and that you gave them a resurrected life. Lord, give us every breakthrough we need, Lord, to fulfill 
this great commission to fulfill what you called us to do. Give us health. Right now, some people need health. Some people need energy. Some people need time. Some people need finances. Some people got a need to fulfill your calling. Lord, let them know that if you put them first, if they put you first, you will put them first. Let them know that they can believe you for everything. Let them know that if they would only obey, you're calling them to obey. On this resurrection Sunday, you're calling them, all those that have witnessed Jesus, you're calling them to obey. Lord, Peter recognized you and he witnessed you, but you still called them to accountability. To to serve your calling. Lord, I pray that these church people would, would, would they all have a calling. That they will recognize their calling and that they would they will serve their calling with everything up to the end, like Peter, with everything. Lord, I pray that you will save those not just here, but in every other church service. That they will know, no, 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 know that they're saved and that they have a calling to their lives. Fill them with the Holy Ghost, baptize them with the Holy Ghost and fire. Even here, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing, rivers of living water, fire, oh God, fire, Holy Ghost, and fire and power. In the mighty name of Jesus, take us, oh God, and bless our days. Bless this day with not, not pagan customs, but with the life, the new life that you grant. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. God bless you. God keep you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. God bless you.